Alright, this video is on the addition and multiplication properties of equality. Alright, so let's start with our first note on what it means to solve an equation. Alright, so note, to solve an equation means to find the solution or solutions of the equation. So some equations will have one solution, some equations will have two, some equations will have a whole bunch of solutions, and some equations may not have any solutions at all. The process of figuring all this information out is called solving uh, an equation. Here's the first property. It's called the addition property of equality. And it says the same number, variable, or expression can be added to each side of an equation without changing the solution of that equation. So in other words, uh, we can add uh, the same thing to both sides of an equation. All right, in math symbols, that would look like this. If A equals B, you have an equation, so one expression equals to another, and if we add C to both sides of the equation, then certainly A plus C should be the same thing as B plus C, right? If this first statement's true, if A does equal B, then A plus C should also equal B plus C, right? Because we're just adding the same thing to both sides. All right, does that make sense? Okay, so let's look at an example. All right, solve for the variable. All right, so here's how we're going to use that addition property. Of, uh, of equality. When we're, when we're trying to solve equations, in general we're trying to isolate uh, the variable to see what number it will be equal to. Right? That's kind of the, the general idea. There are other techniques later on for, for um, some, some other types of, for, for some more advanced equations. But the, but the basic idea still boils down to trying to get the letter, the variable, um, isolated all by itself on one side of the equal sign. Right? So for example, let's start with x minus 2 equals 5. So our goal is to get x all by itself. Well, in order to do that, we've got to find some way to get rid of this negative 2. Right? This minus 2 there. Well, this is where the addition property for equality comes in, comes in handy. If we add 2 to both sides, we know that we're still OK. The, the equation still has balance. Right? So uh, that allows us to go, all right, well, on the left side, we have minus 2 plus 2. That stuff right here all goes to 0. So you just have x plus 0 on that left side, which just goes to x. And on the right side, we have 5 plus 2, which equals 7. Right? We've just isolated the x. Now, the good news about equations is we can always check right, real quick. We can check just by taking the value we found for the variable and substituting it in for the variable in our original equation. So 7 minus 2 equals 5. 7 minus 2 does equal 5. That's a true statement. So checks. So the x equals 7 is the solution to this particular equation. All right, let's try another one. All right, on this one, in order to get rid of the, the 5 here, to make this go to 0, we need to add the opposite of 5. When the opposite of 5 is a negative 5, and that's the same thing as, say, subtracting 5 from both sides. Everybody see that? Okay. You can add the same number to both sides, or we can subtract the same number to both sides, because subtracting is the same thing as adding a negative number to both sides. Right. And then just simplify it up. We get x plus 0 on this side, so x equals negative 9. And if we check that, take the negative 9, plug it in for x, you get negative 9 plus 5, which does indeed go to negative 4. So this is a true statement. So that's the solution. x equals negative 9. Right, let's try one more. All right, negative 7 equals negative 2 plus z. All right, it does not matter which side of the equal sign we isolate the variable. So we just need to get the variable isolated. So we're going to isolate the variable over here on the right side. And to do that, we need to get rid of this negative 2. And so how do we get rid of the negative 2? Well, we can add 2 to both sides. So another way we can think about it is like right below it. So we're going to add 2 to this side and add 2 to this side. Right? And then that gives us negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. Negative 2 and, and positive 2 go to 0 plus z, and so you just get the z. So we get z equals negative 5. And again, you can check that, right? Take negative 5, substitute in for z up here. We have negative 2 plus negative 5. That does indeed go to negative 7. So we can check that as well. 
right? We see how that's working. Right, isolate the variable. So we can add or subtract the same value to both sides of the equal sign. And remember the goal. The goal is to isolate the variable. All right, so now we've got the multiplication property. The multiplication property of equality says that each side of an equation can be multiplied by the same non-zero expression without changing the solution of the equation. Right? We have to say non-zero because if you multiply both sides of the equation by zero, you just get zero equals zero, everything goes away, and that's, that's boring. Right? So we're multiplying both sides of an equation by non-zero values. In math symbols, that would look like this. Right? If a equals b, then a times c is equal to b times c. And we don't want c to be zero here because right? everything would go away. Right? We can also think about it this way. If a equals b, then a divided by c should equal b divided by c. Because remember, division really is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So we, what, this, what this whole thing here means is that we can multiply or divide both sides of an equation by any non-zero number. Okay, so let's try some examples. All right, solve for the variable 4 fifths y equals negative 8. All right, remember our goal here is to isolate the y. Now, in the previous examples, we were adding or subtracting to both sides of the equation. But, but notice here, we have 4 fifths times y. All right, there's multiplication going on. All right, it was, it's not 4 fifths plus y. All right, if it was 4 fifths plus y, then we would need to subtract 4 fifths from both sides in, or, in order to get that y by itself. But we want this left side here to go to 1y. Right? Remember that coefficient of, of, the, of the variable y there, we want that to be a 1. All right, so in order to do that, we need to figure out how we can make 4 fifths go to 1. Well, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this 4 fifths. Right? So you have 5 fourths is the reciprocal. We multiply that times the 4 fifths y. And if you multiply the left side by 5 fourths, you better be multiplying the right side by 5 fourths. Right? Everybody see that? And then we have 5 fourths times 4 fifths. This is 20 over 20, so there's your 1. So this goes to 1y equals, and then 5 fourths times negative 8. And don't forget, negative 8 is the same thing as negative 8 over 1. Right? So this goes to negative 40 over 4, which is negative 10. And again, you can check that by taking negative 10 and substituting it in for y. Right? If you take negative 10 and substitute it in for, for y, you get 4 times negative 10, which is negative 40, and divide all that by 5, and you do get negative 8, so it does check. Right? Everybody see the difference between when we add or subtract to both sides of an equation and when we multiply to both sides of an equation? All right, well, let's try another one of these and see what we got. All right, here we have 2x equals 10. Right? 2 times x is equal to 10. So we want to undo that multiplication that's going here, the 2 times x. Right? So we literally can divide both sides by 2. And you can write it that way if you'd like. You say, all right, 2x divided by 2 is just x. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And you can check this by, if you take the 5 and plug it in for the blue x there, 2 times 5 is indeed 10. Right? But we had to divide by 2 this time, not add or subtract. Right? And then this example. All right, so we've got negative 6 sevenths equals negative b divided by 4. All right, so we need to get rid of the 4 here. All right? um, in order to do that, we need to multiply both sides by the, the 4. Right? And remember, b over 4 is the same thing as one fourth b, right? Those those mean the same thing. There's like a one up here, right? Don't forget. So b over four is the same thing as one fourth times b. So to get rid of that one fourth, we need to multiply by the reciprocal, and that reciprocal is four over one, or just four. Now since it's negative uh, one fourth out here, you know it's negative, then we're going to multiply by negative four to both sides, right? So it looks like the following negative 4 times negative 6 sevenths equals negative 4 times negative b over 4. All right? And then we've got what? Negative times negative this is going to go to positive. This is 4 over 1, so we have 24 sevenths. 
over here you get 4 over 4, negative and positive, so this goes positive B. So 24 sevenths is the solution for this equation. Right? That'll be a little more difficult to check, and you should probably do that just to convince yourself that 24 sevenths is indeed the solution to this equation. All right, so those are the two properties, the addition property of equality and the multiplication property of equality. It's important to know when we can use each one, so um, um, practice and uh, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.